Hey you, are you tired of falling behind the line when it comes to discus throwing? Well, me and my business associate have something special in store for you. It's called physics, and we're going to give a step-by-step -step demonstration of how knowing this can benefit your athletic performance. Now first things first, when you step into the ring, it can be intimidating at first. Use that built-up angst and anxiety to focus on your objective, to throw a discus unnaturally far. Now here's what you don't want to do, just look at this loser go, I mean, come on, don't be this guy. I know what you're thinking, jeez, how can I be more effective at throwing a discus? Well, let me tell you, physics affects each and every part of our daily lives, especially discus throwing. Let's start with the stance. As you can see, the athlete is currently preparing for the event as he begins swinging his arm back and forth, keeping it straight the whole time. Before he throws, he has potential energy. When he begins to spin and throw, the potential energy becomes kinetic energy. When he releases the discus, all the energy becomes transferred into it. As he swings his arm, he experiences centripetal force. The force, being his arm, moving towards the center, his chest. As he spins around in the circle, he begins to build up the centrifugal force. Yet also, when he is spinning, he is also resisting the centrifugal force. Ain't that irony? <laughs> By holding onto the discus, which we in the industry call centripetal force. Before he releases the discus, he spins and jumps with great speed, making a complete rotation by giving himself torque. In addition, when his legs move across the ground, they experience static friction. When the discus is released, it begins to traverse across the path of an ocean, which is between the balance of centrifugal and centripetal forces. The centrifugal force pushes on the discus and sends it soaring. As soon as it's in the air, the movement of the discus is classified as projectile motion because of two things, the parabolic path it follows and it being subject to gravity. Spectators watching the discus are subject to relative motion as well. While the discus moves forward from their view, they move backwards from the discus view. A discus spins as it leaves an athlete's hand. This gyroscopic spinning motion stabilizes the discus in flight. The faster it spins, the greater its angular momentum, and the more its gyroscopic action resists tilting or changing its spin axis. The cross section of a discus is wing-like, so the spin holds its aerodynamic shape pointed into the wind. This maintains lift and prolongs flight time. Newton's laws describe the force-mass acceleration relationship, while vector principles describe the relationship between individual forces and any angular forces, and circular motion equations describe the speed-radius acceleration relationship. So, to quickly review, influences on discus distance include velocity of the discus at release, angle of release, wind direction, and velocity. So why will all of this knowledge help athletes? Simply put, these tricks of the trade will help them achieve greater distances when throwing their discuses. Merely knowing what to do in a competition is only the beginning. Knowing the science behind your skills and techniques will lead to a greater understanding of how much potential you truly have. You may even find something new in the process of evaluation. In short, knowing something works is great, but knowing why it works will help you to grow in many new and spectacular ways.